Hey devs, welcome back. It's Kalen from Kite, the AI-powered coding assistant, and we have another Python project for you today. We're going to show you how to develop a neural network model to predict Tesla's stock price from historical data. You probably know a little bit about Tesla already. It's the car company helping people drive electric vehicles in style. The man behind it all is none other than Elon Musk. Beyond being a tech CEO and futurist, he's also known for tweeting memes and being a wannabe EDM DJ. But jokes aside, even though we'd love to do an entire video on Elon's memes, today we'll see if a neural net can predict Tesla's stock price. And hopefully, we can make Elon happy along the way. So let's start by introducing the concept of time series. A time series is a sequence that consists of equally spaced time steps. For example, our stock price data set uses a time step of one day throughout the trading week, which is just like a normal week, but excludes the weekends, holidays, and any other days the market isn't open. There are two different types of time series, univariate and multivariate. In a univariate time series, we use a single variable to make predictions, and this is usually a lag version of what the model is trying to predict. In our case, the single independent variable is yesterday's closing share price, which we use to predict today's closing share price. In other cases, we might want to consider other features like trading volume and Elon's social media activity, which would make our time series multivariate. For simplicity's sake today, we're going to focus on just one variable for this project. So as I mentioned, yesterday's closing stock price. Time series analyses depend on the stationarity of our data. Stationarity means that there is no drift in our data, there are no upward or downward trends, or more formally, that the statistical properties of our data, such as the mean, variance, and autocorrelation remain steady over time. In this graphic, note how the stationary time series looks a lot like white noise. It fluctuates up and down, but if you were to draw a horizontal line through the middle of the time series, it'd show a stable mean. From that line, we'd expect that the time points above and below are roughly the same distance from the middle. This is what is meant by a constant variance. Time series forecasting allows us to predict future values from trends and past values, which is the concept that we'll focus on today. The model we'll use to predict Tesla's stock price is a type of recurrent neural network that's called long short term memory or LSTM as it's commonly abbreviated to. Unlike a traditional feed-forward neural network, which passes values sequentially through each layer of the network, an LSTM has feedback connections that help it remember preceding information. This makes it a perfect candidate for our needs to do time series analysis. Using all of this information would demand a lot of space in memory and time in computation. So to remedy this, LSTMs have forget gates. Forget gates allow the network to leverage information patterns from both its long-term and its short-term memories with minimal demands on space and computational intensity. Just to be clear, these forget gates and short-term memory have nothing to do with Elon's notorious interview. Whether you're new to Python or already a pro, you should try out Kite as your autocomplete to reduce your keystrokes and save time programming. Kite is a free plugin for your code editor that uses machine learning to save you keystrokes while you're programming. So if you're using Atom, VS Code, Spider, PyCharm, Sublime, or Vim, Kite will seamlessly integrate into your coding workflow. Kite can complete entire lines of code, and it has a feature called Intelligent Snippets that will help you fill in arguments and method calls with variables defined earlier in your script. The window on the right side of my screen here is also a Kite feature called the Kite Copilot. It automatically shows you relevant Python documentation while you type based on your cursor location. This saves you time from having to Google search for docs. The best part of Kite is that it's free and you can download it from the link in the description below. Let's get down to business and dive into the code now. If you want to follow along, there's a link to our GitHub repo in the description below. Let's perform pre-processing steps to get the data ready to feed into the LSTM. First, import NumPy and Pandas. Then we'll read in the data set. Next, isolate the close price time series by dropping unnecessary columns in the data set. We then prepare the time series for the scikit-learn min-max scalar, which will import from the pre-processing module. This scalar transforms the time series to fall into a range from 0 to 1, where 0 represents the minimum and 1 the maximum. This helps reduce the training time of our LSTM. Next, let's split the time series into training and testing sets for model validation. 
The least recent 80% of the data is training, and the most recent 20% is testing. Before I explain the code for this next part, we're going to need a little bit more context. An LSTM relies on a sliding time window when training, so it needs the previous X closing prices to predict the next day's closing price, or X plus 1. We specify the window size is 20, which means we predict the closing price of the next trading day using information from the previous 20-day window. And we do this across the entire data set. So let's create a feature that represents the closing prices of the previous 20 days as a vector. This 20-day vector has a corresponding label that has the 21st day's closing price. With this in mind, we write the method to convert our data set to a NumPy array where each prediction will be based on the previous 20 time steps. Let's call it create features. If you want more detail here, check out the code that's linked in the description below. We call the method that we just wrote to split the data set into X and Y for both the train and test sets like we described earlier. We then reshape the resulting NumPy array into the format that the LSTM needs. To double check our work, write a method called isLeak to check for a data leak. A data leak would occur if some of the rows in the data set are found in both the train and test sets that we created, typically when the rounding was slightly off upon splitting the data set 80-20. We want to avoid this so that our validation set doesn't have any freebies. Next, we build the LSTM model. First we import the Keras models that we need. And then we add the LSTM layer to our model, which will have 50 neurons. We specify that the layer will have a ReLU activation function, which helps our network learn from non-linearities. Next, we add a dropout layer of 0.2, which is standard. This regularizes the network by turning off 20% of the neurons in the previous layer. This technique prevents overfitting, which occurs when models become so powerful that they represent the random noise in our data in addition to the true signal. Regularization is especially important for neural networks because of the millions of parameters that they can handle. Last of all, we add in our linear output layer. We then compile the model and fit it to the training set using the test set as validation. While it trains, the callback we provided saves models at epochs that have a smaller validation loss than any that came before it. What we're looking for here is similarity between our training and loss functions, which shows that our model generalizes well to new data. We save the weights from epoch 89, which is to say the model, since it has the best fit. Let's make predictions on the test data to see how it did, using root mean squared error as our loss function here. Finally, inverse transform the predictions so that we aren't left with the scaled values. Looking at the results, our training and testing RMSEs are indeed similar. Our training set tends to be about $7.5 off from the actual close price, while our testing set is around $5 off. But wait! Did you notice that the validation loss is actually lower than the training loss? Although rare elsewhere in the field of machine learning, this is actually quite common with neural networks. This is due to the regularization method we described earlier, called dropout. When training the network, we use the dropout layer to turn off 20% of the neurons in the preceding layer, which prevents overfitting. This, however, only applies to training. When passing validation data through the network, the model gets to use 100% of its learned parameters to make predictions, which makes for better predictions and an unfair comparison.
Well, all in all, I think that we've succeeded in making Elon happy today with our model. In sum, we trained and tested an LSTM neural network to predict the Tesla stock price across a few years. The same technique can be used to predict tomorrow's stock price with only minor modifications. So congratulations, you've just taken the first step to become a quantitative trader. Thanks for tuning in today, and don't forget to check out the Kite plugin, which will save you tons of time writing code by providing you with intelligent code completions. And finally, please subscribe to our channel, leave a comment with your suggestions for our next video, and we'll see you next time.